What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Truth Life Podcast. We are on episode 88. Like we hit you every week, man. We're hitting you with people that inspire me, people that motivate me, people who I respect. This week we got none other than my boy Terry Smith. Terry Smith. What's up, my brother? How you doing tonight? Man, I'm chilling, man. How you doing? I'm all I'm all good, bro. Let's get straight into it, man. I wanted to um get you on the podcast so we can get your perspective. I think uh, yes. looking at your career and seeing you play out here, you can relate to a lot of the people that follow me and listen in on this. So just getting your point of view on life, bro. What, uh, where you come from? Just go with like a quick little brief intro about yourself and how you got to this point. I'm from Syracuse, New York, man. Uh, upstate New York where it's really cold. Um, you know, not a lot going on. Uh, a lot of, um, you know, low income neighborhoods where I'm from, actually in Syracuse on the south side, um, you know, inner city like anywhere else. <laughs> I think <clears throat> I got to where I am today, not because, you know, I had a you know a bunch of talent um, just because of, you know, work ethic, you know, just not giving up, um, always feeling like I could be better, always wanted to um, better myself, you know, every every year for sure. Now, how, how do you pronounce your college that you went to? I, I couldn't pronounce it, bro. <laughs> exactly. I understand. I don't even tell people the name of my school anymore nowadays. I'm just like, man, hey, the last place I played was France. You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mercyhurst University. Mercyhurst. Okay. Where is that? Erie, Pennsylvania, where it's real cold again. That's like Western PA near Pittsburgh and maybe about an hour and a half from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. This is the most important question I always try to ask because this I get a lot of guys, you know, really interested in this. How did you go from Mercyhurst University to playing overseas? What was Man, that was process tough. like? So <clears throat> after my senior year in school, um, I had pretty decent numbers. I mean, I went to a small division two school. Um, you know, I got, you know, the single <clears throat> individual accolades, first team all all conference, first team, all defense, that stuff. Um, but th that was it. And my coach, you know, he basically asked me, do, did I want to continue playing? I'm like, absolutely. Um, he said, I have a guy in Germany. <clears throat> We're going to make a highlight tape for you, send it to him and see if he likes you. Send the tape over. They said, yeah, we like Terry. We're going to offer him a contract. I mean, the contract was, I mean, you can't get more low budget than that, man. That's the definition of the mud. Yeah. Fourth division, you know, thousand dollars a month. Uh, I had to share a one bedroom apartment with uh, another American, shared a car. I mean, it was really like getting out of the mud, bro. Like for real. Yeah, that, that's been a story I've been hearing, man. Um, and I'm starting to understand that coaches play a big part in guys getting a, getting a chance overseas. That's good information. Yeah, what man. What was it like leaving Syracuse and going to Germany, sharing a car, sharing a home for a thousand dollars a month? How did they convince you? To, well, I guess they convinced you by, you know, you wanted the opportunity. That's all you were looking for, right? All right. That's funny. It was my foot in the door, man. And, and to be honest with you, I didn't really know a lot of guys that was playing overseas. Um, a few guys that I did know, you know, from the town, um, they had a totally different situation. And I didn't really speak to them about overseas. Because honestly, in college, you know, back in the day, I went to school in 2004 to 2008. That's, you know, really old school. So we were, it was more so about like the league. If you ain't going to the league, then it's pretty much, I don't know. You got to try to figure it out. I mean, yeah. the D League wasn't even around, I think, until like you know, six or seven or whatever. <clears throat> but anyway, um, when my coach gave me the opportunity to go to this German team, I was like, man, I'm, I, I'm willing to do whatever, you know. To, to, you know, advance my career. So if this takes going to Germany for a thousand bucks and I can show myself, I'm doing it. All right. So how did you go? For, how did, let me in on a process, how you went from the Ford division in Germany to becoming a household name in Europe? Because you don't really need agents at this point. Like you're, you're a household name. Everybody know Terry Smith. <laughs> how, did, how did that happen? Bro, honestly, man, every year, um, just 
always getting better numbers or staying consistent. Um, I feel like everywhere I've gone, like on my journey, 10 different countries, like I've always showed, you know, my level, every level. So the next team or the, the next league, the next step of league will look at my numbers and say, this guy has been doing this for the last so many years. Give him a shot. That was really my thing, man. Every year staying consistent or getting better numbers. And would you attribute that to just like natural talent or do you work out like, like what's your workout routine like? I'm a maniac, man. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, you know, it's not even only about just, um, you know, on a professional level. I really enjoy working out. I really enjoy getting in the gym, trying to see if I'm able to add this to my skill set. Right. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. like me as in college, I was more so catch and shoot guy. Now I'm more of an off the dribble, pick and roll, one on one type of guy. That was not even my my thing. You know, I was more so about just catching and shooting, one dribble pull ups. So um, to be able to to say no, that's not only what I do. I do this, I do that. I also can do this. You know that that kind of motivated me to always want <clears throat> to try to get better. So every year I was trying to add something to my game, and that's really what did it, man. Honestly. Did, did you have any uh, – I'm big on mentorship. So throughout your pro career, did you have any older player or any older, like, male figure in your life that uh, gave you some guidance along the way or you just <laughs> winging it all the time? Man, that was – that was that's basically what happened, man. I had to wing it. Um, I didn't grow up with a father. Um, I didn't really have anybody in my family that played um, on a high level besides, like, you know, maybe high school. So I didn't really have anybody <clears throat> to guide me. Um, you know, when in, in high school, my mother basically said, you know, if you need any help, you know, you you talk to me. But basically, this decision will come down on you. So like you said, man, I was winging basically everything from college to overseas to everything. Got you. Um, damn, it's kind of the same for me. I had to wing it on both sides. <laughs> uh, and. and because of me having to do that, that put me in like a dark place where I had to eliminate everyone. Like I had to sacrifice all my friends and families to live this dream. Did you have to do something? Like I don't really have friends and family today because I've been here 13 years. So you kind of get forgotten about. Is Are you experiencing the same thing or you're a little more closer to your family like that or friends? I mean, th- what has helped, you know, a lot was the social media thing. You know what I mean? Um, everyone seems to, you know, find you or you you can connect with somebody who I haven't talked to in years. So to be honest with you, it wasn't really difficult for me to connect with people. But the main thing for me was to keep a relationship. Man. That was the toughest thing for me. Man. And that's, I mean, some people, you know, <clears throat> you don't want to let go because you think it's something serious. So, I mean, yeah, that's an important thing too it's, it's hard sometimes for people to to keep a normal relationship right speaking of relationship like i i told you in the briefing we talk about everything on this podcast <laughs> how I hard see that, is man. It, <laughs> <laughs> how hard is it to date being a professional athlete in europe bro <laughs> it was extremely gotta, hard for me <laughs> i just gotta be honest man for for me and i'm being honest and i'm not trying to you know, say I'm this and I'm that, but it's kind of difficult, man, because as a single um, guy over here, as an American, you know, you seem a little bit exotic, like a little bit different. So yeah. sometimes, you know, kind of access to things or people seems to come a little bit easier. If It just, it feels like that to me, you know, from my experience. So, I mean, if you're kind of mentally weak or you're immature in the sense of you can't control yourself, it, it can be hard, man. Yeah. The ice that because the balance. I, I feel a lot of guys, I, I always say it's a few things that derail guys' career. You've had a long career. So, in my opinion, your skin is still glowing. You don't look smoked. <laughs> Nothing against these guys, but I always say um, women, alcohol, weed, uh, no sleep, and porn. It's the four derailers of players' um, of players' career. Yeah. I always, how do you balance all of those things? Or, or maybe, 
you don't have to balance these things. Because I always say, get rid of all of them. Mm -hmm. Me personally. Yeah. But I like that approach too. I'm usually all in or all out. But I always seem to go through a phase where maybe I do slip up because I'm not perfect. You know, there's things that, you know, I, I tend to start to find myself doing in a habit that shouldn't, shouldn't be the best thing for me. But then I find a time where, okay, gather your, yourself like, yo, I'm, I'm tripping right now. And then I, I stop it. But <clears throat> to answer your question, how do I balance it all? I try to keep everything to a, in, in a maintenance type of thing. Like if you can keep everything in a, um, for example, if you want to go and hang out and have a good time, that doesn't stop you from getting your work done. So just put it at a minimum, do it at a point where it's not every day or it's stopping you from, from being great, but just find a balance of working hard and, and having fun. So I wouldn't say I'm not getting rid of everything, but I'm finding a good balance of just knowing what's good for me and what's not. Right. So I tell guys, I mean, you want to smoke? I'm like, smoke. You want to drink? Drink. But I'm like, this can't be a a, a, we, a daily situation. Like, yeah, it, it can't. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the problem, T. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that, and, and yeah. In fact, but, um, but I think it's with some players, I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally against it because even in the NBA, they stopped, um, you know, testing for marijuana. I mean, that's the NBA, one of the biggest businesses in the world, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would they jeopardize something um, to that magnitude if it was that bad for you? You get what yeah. I'm saying? I don't think I don't think marijuana is bad. I'm, a, I'm not against marijuana. I'm against the abuse of marijuana. Yeah, OK. okay. <laughs> Like when, okay. when these dudes can't eat until they wake and bake, <laughs> I'm like, bro, you got a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I can agree. I can agree. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I, not, a, I'm not against anything. I'm like, do everything in, in, uh, moderation, in moderation. If you know what I'm that saying. was the word I was looking for earlier, but yeah. yeah and there you go. So, um, bro, when the first time I met you, I mean, you started off having a conversation that a lot of players don't even talk about. And that would, made me interested in you and wanted to get you on the podcast was we were talking about investments. Right. What got you to that point to where you realized where, all right, I need to start putting this money to work. <laughs> Man, to be honest with you, when I started realizing how much money I was spending per summer and I'm like, man, yo, I, yeah, I'm, I'm I still have money in my, my bank account, but man, that's a lot of money I'm spending in just, you know, two months. I'm like, man, I, you know, I'm getting older and I see the end of the tunnel and I'm just like, it's time for me to start, you know, doing something real serious with the money and having the money work for me. And um, yeah, I just been kind of like educating myself, asking people like yourself who already have the financial, you know, education or whatever, just trying to get some help from every way I can. Right. One of the big thing I had a uh, big problem was the same in the summer it came to a point to where bro, I was looking up, it was 15, 20 K summers. So yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I went over that too. Yeah. So I know it's a lot of other young, what was your process? Like, I mean, like for like, well now, since you, what would you give the advice to the younger player? So he don't have to spend that 25, that 20 K summer and still have the same fun, same experiences. I, man, I'll tell him don't buy a car. <laughs> don't buy a car. I would tell them, um, <clears throat> please start investing early. You know, uh, get you, if you don't want to do it yourself and educate yourself, get um, ask around to people you may know or um, Google a financial advisor and start investing early into index funds or, you know, ETFs or something now, like as soon as possible. Like just put a little bit of your salary into this index fund or, or whatever brokerage account you want and just start now. I would tell them to do that right now. All right. And you, uh, you went straight into real estate. I think you got one of the best investments. Um, you mind if I share it or no? Absolutely, go ahead, bro. Uh, you got you got duplex or triplex? A duplex. I think that's one of the best investments that you know. A lot of people, whenever they invest, they only think single homes or they only think uh, flipping homes. But I'm right. like these duplex and triplex. The more doors you get, the incredible. The, you know what I'm saying? How's that been going? You know, it's something when you since you've told me that I've been scouring Zillow heavily. <laughs> How's I mean, that been going? 
is nice, man. That's a nice spot to get one too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how is that? What was the process? Because one thing that, I mean, index funds and things is what I'm heavily invested in. It's a pretty easy barrier to entry. For real estate, I was always afraid. I'm like, because I'm living over here. I'm like, I've been robbed by so much people back home. It's like, it's hard for me to trust people to receive payments and to put people in the homes, the maintenance. How is, what's the process? If I wanted to invest in a duplex a day, give me a few okay. steps. <laughs> okay. The first thing I would say, dude, is you have to find a, a realtor that you, that you trust, you know, that someone that you know, um, you can kind of depend on and, and helping you go through your, um, your house purchasing process. Um, after you do that, um, you're going to have to clean up your credit, make sure your credit is good. You got to, you know, don't have any <sighs> debt, things like that, or any, you know, too much bad debt or, um, also you need to have some funds, man, because, um, whether you're doing first time home owners, um, FHA, <clears throat> that's 3.5% down of whatever the house is worth. Or if you don't, um, apply for the FHA and you go conventional, you got to put 20% down of a house. So you're going to have to have some cash on the side for this. This, that's another thing I would tell them. <clears throat> Other than that, the process was pretty simple, man. I went to the realtor. He, he said, uh, which house do you like? He gave me a few options. I checked them out. I said, I like this one. He said, okay, I have a uh, mortgage um, company that I work with. He'll check your credit. He'll check your um, your work history and your ability to pay bills. And uh, he'll get back to you and let you know how much money you can um, you can borrow. So I waited for about, you know, two or three, not even two or three days. It might have been the same day. He called me back and said, you are um, qualified for such and such amount of money. After you do that, it's pretty much everything straightforward. Your realtor is going to walk you through the entire process. You don't really have to do too much. Um, you can have a lawyer with you at your closing, but if you don't want to, it's not really necessary depending on the state. Uh, for example, Texas, um, any, um, uh, mortgage signings, everything is straightforward. It's basically the same contract with anybody buying, um, some type of property in Texas. So, I mean, it's not necessary to have a lawyer there, but you can, if you want to. Other than that, man, it's simple, man. It's really not that hard. I think anybody could do it. All right. That's why, um, you know, it's a, for me, in my opinion, that's called something tangible. You know, today, everyone is trying to get rich quick. Yeah. And this can be the nest egg to get you rich forever. You know? <laughs> with, I mean, even on, um, <clears throat> with the duplex, you make the money on top of the mortgage. And it's basically just paying for you. And you're just pocketing money on top of the of what you're receiving every month. I mean, for me, that's a, a great retirement plan. And then you just keep flipping that process. Take the equity out the building, Enough. which is the money that you have in the home. And you just put that on a down payment or something big. You just can continuously doing that. It's like Monopoly. It's like a board game. Uh, and then, I mean, you, you, you've kind of got the, the, the process, man, to get out that rat race. All right. I try to tell all my guys. That's in my mentorship program. I said, bro, if you play 10 years overseas, you can get close to at least 500000 if you're an average player, right? That's with nothing invested, pretty much. That's just in salary. So I'm like, if you catch a wave where you get a Euro Cup team or Euro League team, you can clear a million dollars in 10 years, right? That should be way more. If you just put that into real estate or if you put that into ETFs, very safe things. Real estate is very, it's the quickest way to become a millionaire in America. Right. If you just get 10% on that investment, you got a million dollars, you're buying cash. So all of that rental income is coming directly into you. If you just, mm. if you make 10% on an ETF, that's $100,000 a year and your principal is not touched. It's so, incredible. Man. The win-win, man. Yes. Win-win. So I'm like, you still got your principal, you're getting passive income, and you can still donate to the principal. It keeps going up. Because the thing is, what I try to get 
dudes to understand is that you can retire after, like really retire. Yeah. But the way to do it is by having that nest egg, letting that your principal work for you, your duplex is pretty much one of your principles, right? And I was like, you still make money though. You do things that you enjoy doing that's fairly easy. That's why I do the videos, the photography, the graphics and stuff. That goes straight into ETFs. That money, yeah. I don't even see it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I just want guys to get on that wave, like how you, how long, I would say, when did you invest it in, in, in the duplex? I bought the property uh, in July. I closed in July to 2021. And that's Brand new that was one of your first big investments, right? Yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. man. It was it was my first um, real investment with that type of money. You know, going at one time, you know, making a transaction in, in that size amount. Yeah, that was the first big investment. What he's telling y'all is that y'all can make that investment five, six years earlier. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent, man. And and honestly, you don't need that amount of money. Just the route that I went, you know, I chose to go with a conventional loan. Um, I had to put a little bit more money down, but that's not the process everybody has to do. Right. And you'll still be the money if you um, took out an FHA loan and only had to put three point five percent. I mean, that's a very doable thing for a lot of people. Oh man, we we needed this. <laughs> so. If I was to go back to Syracuse, to your neighborhood, what yeah. would this what would they say about Terry Smith? They would say they absolutely would say that guy was a hard worker and he was smart. He was hard working and smart. Book smart or <laughs> I mean, like all together, I think that would be a general thing people would say. He would say he was a smart dude, good dude, down to earth for sure. And yeah, that's it, man. Down to earth. Oh. Perfect. I got, I talked to guys, you know, all the guys talk to me in the league, bro. I don't know how these, <laughs> you know bro, <laughs> seem like a real one, bro. Like, <laughs> body, attitude, character, you good, bro. Yeah. I, I don't want to keep you too long, you know what I'm saying? But um, every time I heard something about Terry, you know, like, mean is like my brother. That's like my right hand man. Everyone always said Terry is like a breath of fresh air. It's like when I'm around you, whenever I see you, your energy is always high. Even whenever you're frustrated, you got a you got a million dollar smile, I call it. How, it bro. how do you like a lot of people struggle with this? You don't understand, in my opinion, guys get jobs because that carry weight. You know what I'm saying? You might not notice it, but what makes you so personal? Were you always like this, or were you did you learn to be like this? Or no, nah, I think I think I've always been kind of like a people person. Um you know, I'm I'm definitely extroverted. I have no problem going up to people that I don't know. Um, and I'm, I'm open-minded. So, like, when I was going to these different countries, I would always be trying to speak that language or trying to learn it, and they would always appreciate that. And that kind of, like, attracted people to me also, you know, like, trying to learn the language. They, oh, you're one of the Americans that kind of took pride in appreciating our culture. So, you know, people like that and stuff like that, man. Things like that. Right. That goes into my, that was my last, that was actually my last question before I asked my last question. That's crazy. Oh, Because <laughs> I always say learn the language, try to get in the culture. I done got crazy yeah. in the football. I take French classes every morning. So, really? um, yeah, I'm, I'm on it, bro. I really, bro, you're a real one, bro. <laughs> I, and I like what you're doing, man. I, I like yeah. what you do. Appreciate it, bro. Um, what, what do you, what, if you, I don't like to, no, it's no cap. So I don't like to ask that question. So a lot of people ask me, when are you going to retire? I hate that question. I'm like, I'm never going to yeah, retire. Yeah. The game retire that. for me. What do you think? What what, the, what do you want life to look like after you're done? For me, man, um, you know, this is interesting that you asked me that because this is a new thing that I actually just decided recently. Um, originally, my plan was just to um, buy... <clears throat> play basketball for the next five or six years, make sure I buy an investment property every summer and basically live off of the profits on the top of the the rentals. And I kind of was just, you know, I probably go and help my family or, you know, start a, you know, a small company, like working out with basketball or something like that. Something simple. and just kind of started a family, man. But I had a conversation with a friend of mine and um, she said, why don't you go back into what you learned in school? 
I have an IT degree, computer science, four-year degree, technical degree. She said, man, tech right now is so hot. You can have a job that's very, fairly simple. You can work remotely and you can make an easy six-figure check on top of your property rental money. Thought about it. I said, no way I want to do that. She explained to me how working in startup tech companies or working for Google, um, they really give you a lot of freedom. You're able to travel. You have a great salary. I mean, like, it's definitely a, um, a work-friendly environment. You're like, you, you won't be stressed at all. And the more she talked to me about it, I was like, man, why not? That sounds great. I'll have more money. Um, I'll be a lot more stable. And why not? Try something new. All right. So, uh, man, man, the tech business, my best friends in tech, um, them boys making a million dollars a month, bro. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I have a degree. I mean, it's never going to go away. I got to take a boot camp class or, you know, do some refreshing up on technology because, you know, it's always evolving. But um, after you do that, I mean, you pretty much can get your foot in the door simply um, just by applying and being a, a black man. Cause you are diverse, and I mean, you should be set. I got you, man. That, that's that's that sounds solid, brother. <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought about it, man. I thought it only hard, man. I, I didn't want to work at first, man. I just kind of wanted to live off the rental properties, but um, I think, man, I, I, I want to get into this tech thing and just try something new, man. Think about it. You know, I've been playing basketball professionally for fourteen years. This is all I know on a professional level. I mean, why not give it a shot? Life, if you don't like it, you don't you know, get into something else. But I mean, just try it out. You ain't got to stay there forever. Just give it a shot. Uh, uh, I definitely understand. I said I, pro- I always wanted to coach. Then when I started making money, I'm like, I'm never going to coach. Now it's yeah, the point I, I'm like, <laughs> and like, I, I don't, I wouldn't have the patience like a coach should have with his players. You know what I mean? Like, I think I would want things done now. And I probably wouldn't be as patient as I should be. So I couldn't be a coach. All right, now. Nah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a tough situation. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Nah, man. Um, I don't really got my, I just You answered everything. We got more than enough for the... Oh, man. <laughs> bro. I always say if you got anything you want to ask me, you can ask me now. You can ask me off camera. It's it's always up. I always get a guest that, that time. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Man, I saw, oh man, I'm not leaving without asking you a question, my brother. <laughs> That's what you, bro. What you got? Okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I, obviously you see that the market is down right now, right? <laughs> right, right. Market is down, inflation is up, gas prices are going crazy. Um, what's the move, man? What's the financial move right now during this market that's on the down? So T, I was waiting for a time like this. I'm like, whew, it's finally hit. You know what I'm saying? Because I got, the, I got the capital to go. I got a lot of capital. I was waiting for a time. But this the wrinkle. I didn't expect a war to happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good <laughs> right, So now it's, I feel like I'm guessing again. You know what I'm saying? I'm still I'm still gonna do my monthly thing because I'm in, I'm I'm doing this for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it's like right now it's to the point of where T I ain't gonna lie. I'll give you bad information if I tell you I know what the hell is going on because niggas might get nuked tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's really crazy right now. I mean, I, I get the extreme, you know what I'm saying, but that's really crazy right now, bro. Like it, I wasn't even expecting any of that, man. Yeah. No, honestly. Because the market, it tanked. It's not as bad as it's ever been, but it's been tanking for like for a month and a half now. Pretty mm-hmm. much all the gains I got last year is gone. I, I finished the year on a 22% return. It was mm-hmm. a great year. Oh, and everything's gone. Bro, I'm at like, it, it, from year to date, it's like now at 7%. What? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm down like seven percent, bro. I'm still gonna put a lump sum. I'm probably gonna put like ten k if I, if just to be modest. But I, I had a large amount. I was, bro, I was gonna put like forty. No, I no, I, I, I totally get ten. You know what I'm saying? But right now, I was like, you still, you pretty much can't lose because it has to get better than this. 
at least back to a base level because the right. I'm, I'm in the S&P 500 for the most part. So that's mm. the Apple, that's the Teslas, that's the Facebooks. They're going to be around for a while, you know? Forever. So, but it's a lot of opportunity if you can find them little companies that are struggling right now that got great, solid foundations. It can be mm. some huge gains, huge mm. gains. But with this war, how, my thing, if I was to give you anything, how long can you last? I can take the hits completely. Right. And it doesn't bother me. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So I could take has that. Luxury. Huh? But but not everyone has that luxury. Right. So I'm saying, you see what I'm saying? It depends on your your uh your situation. I can right. afford to take these hits. You know what I'm saying? So if you can't afford to take these hits, I would say get about 10% underneath your principal and then start panicking. But if you still right. got your principal, hold. Hold and hold. buy more. You know what I'm hold. saying? So okay. that's what I would say, bro. Okay. Now, and I take that information. Appreciate that, good brother. Yeah, man. But besides that, man, I ain't got much else, man. Just want to get a piece of your brain, my brother. Just hear it from I the horse's mouth. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Once again, thank you for your time. You guys, this was Terry Smith. I'm going to leave y'all like I always leave y'all, man. Every day you got to make them pay so one day you can live a truth life. We yes, are. sir.